Okay, we're going to be trying something new. Well, technically this is my eighth video, so everything is new at this point, but <clears throat> anyways. I received the question in one of my videos, which I really like, so it says, great video, please keep them coming. I have a question that might or might not be suited for a video. In a designed experiment, if we are measuring the response several times, how do we input this? If we simply model the mean, don't we throw away a lot of good information? And could we actually model the standard deviation rather than the response and try to find a setting that minimizes standard deviation? And yes is the short answer, but it's not very helpful. So let's try and give it a look. The data we're going to be looking at to answer this question is some data that I generated myself in a DOE course some time ago. It was a really fun course where we got to use a catapult that looks something like this. And if you're thinking it was highly unnecessary for me to make that in paint, you'd be absolutely right. But where's the fun in that? Um, the way it works is that there is a rubber band. So the red here is a rubber band. It's one big rubber band. And it's anchored here. It goes to the pin front. And it is um, fixed at the pin back. And we draw back this arm to a pullback position. We release it. It is then stopped at one of these three stop positions. And when it hits the stop position, the ball will fly. And we're trying to analyze and model the flight length, both the standard deviation of the flight length and just the length. We're trying to get as long as possible. Okay. The four factors we have included is the position of the pin here in front, which determine the height of the rubber band. We have one, two, and three position. We have, again, a one, two, and a three for the stop position, determining where the ball will start at flight. We have the pull back angle, one, two, and three, which determine the force of the pull. And we have the pin back position, one, two, and three, which also determines where the rubber band is fixed in this arm, which then has an effect, or a, we think it has an effect, on the length of the shot. So here is the finished DOE, and as you can see, I have the uh, four factors we just discussed in paint. These have been set up such that all have been tested at all three levels, and that any level have been tested at any other given level, giving me uh, the possibility to find interactions and so on. Now, the question was, how do I set it up if I want repeated measurement for my response? And my response is shot, and the way that I've set it up is that I have here each replicate sh shot for me as a individual column. So in the same manner, if these were replicate uh, measurements, I would set them as, as individual columns. Now to make a model on the average, what we need to do is highlight our three columns, right click and say new formula column, say combine, do an average. I get then the average shot in the same way, I can right click and say new formula column, combine, and give me the standard deviation. Now I'm going to be using my five step process to create a predictive model and jump. Now I have a two minute video that explains that process, but I'm just gonna run quickly through it for the average shot. I've already done it for the standard deviation, but let's, for the sake of repetition, do it one more time. So what we do is we go into fit model, we take our factors, we go to macro, we go to response surface, then we take our y, which is in this case the uh, average shot. I then go and set personality to stepwise. I press run. And this time I'm going to be using a new stopping rule. And I really encourage you just to like, play around with the different stopping rules when you're doing this and see how that affects the model selection. I've chosen my stopping rule, I hit go. I can see jump has now selected the significant factors. I press make model. See that this list is now reduced. Emphasis is on effect screening. I press run. And I have here my model for increasing the, uh, for getting the maximum shot length. Okay, the other model that I have is a model that is created to reduce standard deviation. So I have two different things that I want to, to obtain. I want to have a highest possible uh, shot length, but I don't want to compromise on my robustness, so I want to have as low as possible a standard deviation. But those two might be contradictory. So to see that, what we need to do is go to that, say 
save column prediction formula. Now I can close down this model. And here I go again and say save column prediction formula. And I close down this model. I go find my data again, which is there. And now see that I have two new columns, which are called prediction formula. So what we do is we then go into graph and the profiler. I take my two new prediction formula columns, put those into Y prediction formula and hit OK. What you can then see is that I have two different profilers. Now one profiler is for the shot length and another profiler is for the standard deviation. I'm going to set some desirability function for these. And for the, we can go in here and we can say set desirabilities. So what do I desire for the average shot? I want that to be maximized. So I'm going to put this on maximize. What do I want for the standard deviation? Well, I want that to be minimized. So you see one desirability curve is going upwards and the another desirability curve is going downwards. And I can now ask jump to go in and say maximize desirability, find the place where the standard deviation will be the lowest, but the average shot length will be as high as possible. And do we have any contradictory? Not very interesting. We have the stop position where the lower stop position will always give me a more robust. But if I were to choose, like say, let's say stop position two, I would get a slightly longer shot, but a very dramatic changes to the standard deviation. So here's one where we can really see that if I, no, the, the least standard deviation is at stop position three, but the longest shot is at stop position two. But jump says, well, it's much more favorable to have a little, little less length because that has a strong reduction in our standard deviation. If you have a burning question about statistics, hit me up in the comment and I might select your question for the next video. But thanks for watching. Give it a like if you liked it. Leave a subscribe if you want more content like this. Um, again, thanks for watching. I'm out.